Welcome back. This is one in a series of videos looking at some of the time-lapse capabilities in the Nikon Z series cameras. In this first video we're going to look at basic time-lapse created in camera and how we capture for more sophisticated time-lapse. There will also be videos on how we take those captured images and create more complex time lapses and also more advanced time lapses. We're increasingly used to seeing time lapses, whether we realize it or not, in places like YouTube and on terrestrial TV channels. They can be quite a fun way of capturing quite dynamic content and most of us have the capability in our smartphones. We're going to focus on the capabilities that are increasingly built into both DSLRs and mirrorless. I came across it and started using it with my D850 and there are many ways which we can capture and create time lapses. At the simplest end, as I say, our smartphones have that capability, with the smartphone doing a lot of the heavy lifting and creating the time lapse. Increasingly, DSLRs and mirrorless have this capability built into them, where the camera can take a series of shots and in camera create a time lapse movie for us. And we'll look at that in this video. Increasingly, though, DSLRs and mirrorless cameras have intervalometer capability built into them where it allows you to program the camera to take a series of shots at a repeated interval over time and then store those individual images on your memory card. To then turn them into time lapses you need to use packages such as either Premiere Pro or specialized packages such as LR time lapse and we'll look at how we then process those images in another video. Increasingly though there are apps and packages that will take a single image and animate that image, which isn't quite creating a time lapse, but creates a similar effect. And we'll look at those perhaps in another video. So in this video, we're gonna start with basic time lapse, one where the lighting stays pretty constant, and we're gonna look at how we capture images in that scenario. So I've set the camera up um, looking out towards the cathedral down from the hills with a bench as a little bit of foreground interest. Um, the clouds that are nicely bobbly across the sky should make for an interesting time lapse as they move across the sky. And as I said, there's a number of different ways we can go about time lapse. Let's look at setting up the camera for a time lapse movie. And even though we're taking a time lapse movie, the camera is actually taking individual shots and then stitching them together in camera to make a movie. So we've got to have the setting on the camera set to stills photography. I tend to have the camera set to aperture priority. Um, and it's important to have the um, white balance set to the appropriate white balance, not left on auto um, to be able to do these successfully. I have ISO set to auto ISO and it's important quite often, it's important to turn off delighting and vignette control, particularly if you're going to be using the smoothing setting, which we'll come on to in a second. So you've got your camera set up, um, you're in position, you've got your composition right. So we come into photo shooting menu and we want to go right to the bottom. So rather than scrolling down through all the menus, let's go up and that takes us to the bottom of the menu and we find time-lapse movie. So before we press start, let's look at some of the options we've got here. So the first option is the interval between the shots that we want. I've got it set to one second here, but you can set it to any number of seconds or minutes. If we then come down to shooting time, I've got it set here to shoot every second for five minutes. What that shows you beneath it in blue is that if I shoot every second for five minutes, that will create 300 shots. Now I'm recording this, I've asked it, the camera to create a 4K movie at 24 frames per second. So that will give me a 12.6 second um, time lapse movie. It's showing there that I've actually got um, space on the card for up to three minutes worth of movie to be produced and the bar beneath it shows that I've already got some files on the memory card, the amount of space it will take up and therefore the amount of space 
remaining. The next setting down is exposure smoothing. Now this is something that's really useful on the camera, particularly if you're shooting at sunrise or sunset where the lighting is changing or you're expecting the lighting to change quite significantly. What the camera does here is it looks at the lighting conditions and as they change it makes very small incremental changes to the settings in the camera to give you a much better quality time-lapse movie. If we now come down to silent photography, what this does is if you think you're, you're taking hundreds of individual shots, if you use the mechanical shutter, it's going to put quite a lot of wear on the shutter, it's going to make quite a lot of noise, um, and therefore what you can do is turn on silent photography, and this uses the electronic shutter, and therefore there won't be any sound for each of the individual shots. So I tend to leave that turned on. You can choose the image area and in this one you can choose to shoot at the full FX or you can choose to shoot at the DX crop. Now that can be quite useful on the Z7 because if you've got say a 70mm lens you're shooting with but you want to get a little bit of extra reach, if you shoot at DX crop that will give you a 1.5 multiplier on the lens so a 70mm lens would become a 105mm lens. The next setting down is frame size and frame rate. Here you can choose whether you record at 4K, 1080p um, and the frame rate. I'm going to leave it set to 4K and 24 frames per second because that will match with my other um, footage. And then the last setting is interval priority. Now if you're shooting in aperture or um, fully programmed mode the camera will adjust the settings. Now if you think that I've set it to shoot every second, if for some reason the light dropped and the camera therefore said actually I need a shutter speed of greater than one second, it wouldn't be able to do that because the shutter speed would be greater than the interval between the shots. So what this will do is give priority to that interval and it will make sure that the shutter speed will always be lower or faster should we say, than the interval. So we come back to start, we set up all our settings and we hit start and the camera will prepare for a second and then start shooting. If you want to stop the um, time lapse for any reason you just turn the camera off, let the green light go off and turn it back on again and it will reset. Okay, so we've done our video. The second way you can do this is by getting the camera to take individual images that you can then take out of the camera on the memory card as individual images and bring them together as a time lapse in post, either in a specialist package or in um, Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's take a look at interval timer shooting. And this is slightly different from time-lapse movie because rather than the camera doing the heavy lifting and producing the movie, what this will do is it will take a series of shots at predefined intervals and then store the RAW or JPEG shots on the memory card. So if we set up the camera as we did for time-lapse movie, then we come into menus and again we go down to the bottom and one above time-lapse movie is interval timer shooting. So let's look at the settings within here. It's very similar to time-lapse movie, except there's one extra setting here, which is that we can choose the start time either now, or we can choose a date and a time at which the camera will start shooting, which can be quite useful if you want it to sh start shooting very early in the morning and you're still asleep, or for some other reason you want it to start at a predefined time. We can then set the interval. So I've got it set to three seconds in between shots on this occasion. And then we come down to intervals times shots over um, interval. And what I've got it set here is I want it to take 300 shots and I want it to take one shot each time. What it shows at the bottom there is that if we press start now then the end 
day and time um, would be 654. Exposure smoothing, again, same as in the time lapse movie. Silent photography, again, is setting here so that the camera is totally silent when it's firing the shutter. And interval priority um, with interval timer shooting, you choose to have the all of the shots f stored in a new folder um, and you can choose to have it reset the numbering. And when you press start, the camera prepares for a second and then starts shooting. And as with time-lapse movie, if you want to stop the shooting for any reason, you turn the camera off, wait for the green light to go out, and then you can turn it on again. Now obviously at this stage in the process we've only captured 300 still images in the camera and there's a bit of post-production to be done. But in the weird world of uh, video production I'm actually editing both videos in parallel. So I can show you the output now. But we will have a second video showing you how to use a mixture of Lightroom and LR Timelapse or Premiere Pro to create the time-lapse video I'm going to show you now. I'll put a card above when it's um, released and if you're enjoying this series and you want to get that second one hit subscribe below, hit the notification bell and you'll be notified when that video is released. So enjoy this time-lapse, um, we'll perhaps compare the two and I'll throw down the gauntlet to you, see what you can do with your cameras, what kind of time-lapses can you create whether it's on your smartphone, in your camera, let us know how you're getting on in the comments below and don't forget hit that subscribe button hit the notification bell and you'll get notified for the second part of this series